Winter is just around the corner and we've been getting asked loads and loads of questions about how we are going to be tackling some of the venues that we are going to be fishing through the colder months. So this video is giving you my top five tips for catching more fish this winter. It's really been evident that the weather has started to change now. A lot of the venues that were fishing, the water clarity is starting getting clearer, the temperatures have started to drop, and obviously the water temperature has started dropping as well. Over the weekend, I was out on a coaching session with Jeff, but I actually took Dad along with me. It was at Southfield Reservoir, and I managed to capture some of the action. The moody mistress, very, very cold wind today. We're here with Jeff. He's into his third lump. Proper fish. He just changed his feeder for the third time to caught another fish. Look at that, proper fish. Well done, well done mate. Peg 45, very cold wind today, very, very cold. <laughs> Dad's on the box, he's on peg 44. It's actually a nice change for me to be sat behind him fishing on this venue. That's Jeff's third fish and everyone's been a proper one. Well done mate, the moody mistress in fine form on a very cold day. Not many anglers here, as you can see. But it's great to see some proper fish feeding. It was a bitterly cold day, but it was amazing how many fish fed. It was an absolutely fantastic session. So I hope you enjoyed that little bit of rare footage of dad fishing. I was out there with the Blazeware as well, and later on in the video, I will be just giving you some feedback of what I've experienced using the Blazeware heated clothing over the last month. And I hope you're gonna appreciate some honest feedback from that, what is widely regarded as the top of the range in heated clothing. So the top five tips. Tip number one has to revolve around ground bait. As predominantly a feeder angler, ground bait features very, very heavily in my fishing all year round. Now in winter and autumn, this is when I start looking at the ground baits and the ground bait choices that I'm using. And I just start to look at more darker mixes and mixes that have got less feed in them. To me, I always feel much more confident in fishing darker mixes when the water clarity is quite clear and the ground baits that you're feeding really need to be low in food value as well. And that's because you don't want fish eating the actual ground bait itself or much of it anyway. You only really want to be giving the fish the particles that feed that you are deciding to feed because let's, let's face it, fish feed less during winter. So that means we just want to control it a little bit and cut back on the amount of feed that we're actually giving them. Now I've always had more faith and confidence in darker mixes and dark green is also a favourite of mine. Now the mixes that I'm going to be looking at and using this winter are Ringer's Dark, I mean this is a mix that I use all year round anyway, lots of you know this and it's quite easy to get hold of because it's sold in lots of tattle shops up and down the country but obviously you can get it online as well um, from tattle shops that do mail order and online sales. As you can see it's a dark green mix which is what I really really like and it's very very low feed value as well it is a fish meal mix it's quite strong as well so you might want to think about that because sometimes strong mixes are a little bit more selective as regards the actual fish that you're going to be targeting so sometimes a strong mix like this may suit targeting bigger fish all right so bear that in mind but as you can see it's a lovely dark green color another mix that I'm going to be looking at is swim stim this is the brand new one from Dynamite. It's the Swim Stim Silver um, Fish Mix. This is actually the Betaine Green, as you can see. It's slightly lighter in green from the Ringer's Dark, but that will obviously darken down when you start adding water to it. And that's another really fine mix. It's a fine pellet feed mix. This is brand new, so I'm really looking forward to getting out on the bank and trying that out this winter. 
there are cereal mixers out there those two are fish meal mixers this is one of the win-win range again it's a really nice well it's black really you consider this one to be as you can see it's low in feed it's a cereal based mix so there's no fish meal in this so lots of anglers tend to use this on more natural type venues or venues where you don't want to be too selective about the fish that you're targeting because cereal mixes will catch a roach and all sorts of different species so that's another mix that i'm going to be trying this winter now there are two more mixes that i want to show you and they are from boland these ones come in much bigger bags this one is the feeder black it is one I mentioned in a video quite a few weeks ago. Feeder black, as you can see, and as the name suggests, it's very, very dark, it's black in color. These do come in three kilo bags, so these work out very economical. However, these are cereal mixers. Okay, so if I show you the label there, it's feeder black from Boland, but these aren't fish meal mixers, but three kilo bag, very, very good for value. Now there is another mix that I will be trying through this winter, and it is another Boland mix. And that one is in a five kilo bag. All right, there we go. It's a really dark mix. Black, you would say. And as the name suggests, all round black. And that's basically telling you exactly what it is. It's a cereal based mix, so it's not fish meal. Okay, this is Boland. I'll show you the package in there. And you can see through the window that it's really, really dark. Low feed, great on more natural waters. And when you just want to be less selective about the fish that you're targeting. And a five kilo bag i will put a link underneath to more information about these mixers all of the mixers in case you want more information about them but those are key mixers that i'm looking forward to using this winter tip number two is all about feeders lots of people ask me what sort of feeders i will tend to use through the winter months and as a general rule the best thing to bear in mind is just scale the feeder down now it depends what sort of feeder fishing you're doing if you're fishing with pellet feeders just scale them down. If you're fishing with method feeders or an open method feeder, in this case, just scale them down. To give you an idea of the actual size of these, there we go, that'll give you an idea of the actual size of the feeders themselves. The same applies to when you're cage feeder fishing as well. You can just scale the size of the feeder down. If I pop that there for you, it gives you an idea of how small these feeders are. And that's all winter's about. It's about scaling back. Fish in winter, because the water is cold, the fish are moving around less so if they're moving around less then that means they're burning less energy and that means they don't have to eat, eat much food or as much food as normal so that means that they are just going to be eating less so it's always better to err on the side of caution scale down the size of your feeders because ultimately that's going to scale back the amount of feed that you're actually feeding depth versus range it's a topic that lots of people ask about all year round and it's when people are thinking about what lines they think they should be fishing do you go right out into the reservoir in in winter or do you go look for the deepest part of the swim in winter for me i like to target different areas of the swim if i've got fluctuations in depth then i will always opt if i have the option to target different depths of water so if you can find the deepest spot of your swim put a spot there or put a line in there and if you've got another area of the swim that is slightly shallower then I will cover my options and place some bait there or put a line in there as well. With that in mind one of the best friends you can have is a, is a stopwatch we've talked about this a lot this is just a cheap one it doesn't matter what you use you could even use your watch if you prefer or your phone and basically the stopwatch is used to find out where the deeper areas are in your swim so at the start of the session just put a bomb on your rig just put a bomb on on a snap link swivel and cast out to different areas of the swim and press the stopwatch as soon as the bomb hits the surface and stop it again when it hits the bottom that's going to give you a reading of how deep it is and by doing that in different areas Areas, it's going to build up a picture in your head about where the deeper areas are so just use a stopwatch it's much more accurate than counting and that will let you know where the deeper areas are and that way you'll be able to cover your options so if you are faced with a venue or a peg where there aren't fluctuations in depth then we quite often it's very very common on lots of different venues in winter to go further out into the lake or the reservoir because as a general rule certainly with fish like carp and bream as well to an extent on those shallower venues they tend to push out into the open water during the winter months tip number four refine your approach now that really applies to every aspect of your kit but the main aspects that it really refers to is you might want to start using lighter or lower diameter hook lengths 
just to enhance the chance of you getting more bites and that goes for the hooks as well scale your hooks down in summer months i mean i've i've been out with one or two lads this weekend coaching and they're amazed at the size of the hooks that we that we often use they are much bigger than what they would expect and that's because we've learned that when fish are feeding certainly on natural venues we can get away with larger size hooks than what we ever thought would be possible and that just makes our fishing much better you know we're missing less bites but you're losing less fish as well and it just um, it, it's just great to get away with a bigger hook when you can however in winter when fish are a lot cagier they're moving around less they're not picking a bait up and swimming off as much like they do in the summer months they tend to just work their way over the feed area much slower so we tend to scale the um, hook size down as well. A 16 and an 18 is ideal if you're fishing a cage feeder type approach. Those are ideal hooks because if you're fishing with a single dead red maggot, double pinky, anything like that, those size hooks are matched perfectly. And my best bit of advice about those is whatever hook pattern you decide to select, just have a look at the gauge of the actual hook itself. All right, there are some in these sizes that are very fine, fine wire. So they might not be suited to the type of fish or the species of fish that, and size of fish that you're targeting. And on the flip side of that, if you are targeting silverfish, little roach and skimmers and that sort of thing, you don't need a really thick gauge hook. All right, so just try to find that nice balance. This MXC1 range is what I'm using on my cage fishing right now on commercials where barbless hooks are allowed, or they're the only hooks that are allowed. And the, this is the pattern that I'm using because it's a nice medium gauge hook. And if you do hook any bigger fish, these are still strong enough to land those. And tip number five is feel your way into the session. The old saying of you can't take out what you put in never rings more true than what it does during winter. You never know what to expect in winter. It could fish good, it could fish hard. We don't know, you don't know if you're fishing for one bite or whether you're fishing for 50 bites. So it's always best in winter to feel your way into the session. So when you start off your session, don't go piling loads of bait in because if it's not gonna be a good day, you stand every chance of blanking. Whereas if you put a tiny little bit of bait in, catch one or two fish and if it turns into one of those days where there aren't many fish being caught then you've edged your way into it and hopefully you're going to catch more fish than those around you but if it does start fishing really well and it's much better better than you thought then just stop putting more feeding simple as that you can put a larger feeder on or just stop putting more feeding and that way you're actually feeding to the bites that you're getting and on what you've seen being caught around you so it's a much more controlled approach and it means that you're just not blowing your peg from the outset remember you can always put extra bait in during the session if it turns out a little bit better than you expected well i hope those tips help put more fish in your net this winter if you have got any more detailed questions about your winter fishing then please feel free to comment below if you enjoy those sorts of videos that go a little bit more in depth then you might want to check out my other channel patron tv the link is just underneath for you it's a channel where you can get extra videos each month up to 10 extra videos and we do have a couple of get togethers each year as well so if you want to spend a bit of time on the bank with us then obviously you're free to do so so you might want to check that out there are other perks involved there as well and it's a much more um, personal platform where we have live q a sessions as well which is not quite as crowded as what it is right here on youtube when we do the um, live feeds that I occasionally do anyway so if that's something that you're interested in and you want to see those extra videos then the link is below for you blaze wear it's widely re regarded as the uh, pinnacle of heated clothing I've been wearing these garments now for, for four weeks and if you didn't see the video of the unboxing of these products then that was about a month ago it's right here on this channel if you want to check that out on some of the venues that I fish like Southfield Reservoir um, just like many open water venues the wind can actually really be cold and certainly when you've been sat there for a few hours so I have had chance to use these over the last four weeks now my honest opinion is they're still going strong you know some of these garments the buttons fail on this particular one this is the button on the heated leggings that I'm using and these have been fantastic the buttons worked every single time now we've also had the gilet as well which is basically like a body warmer or a vest if you want to call it that and that's still going strong as well now the key feature to the, the the leggings that i really really liked which i don't know if this is intentional or not because i haven't spoken to the company but those of you that will have seen the video the previous video is um that you will have seen is that this button is actually on that tag as you can see so that's on a tag which actually tucks down the inside 
of the actual leggings when you're wearing them and that is the button that you switch it on and through the three different heat levels now one brilliant feature with this that i never expected is that as you can imagine we're anglers when we're on the bank these are underneath i've then got some joggers over the top you then might have um, some waterproof trousers or you might have in my case like a, a bib and brace or um, a, a, that sort of style clothing now the great thing with that is because i thought that was going to be took down the inside i thought when i do want to switch these on when i've been on the bank for a couple of hours it's going to be a little bit awkward to get to you know it's going to be a case of putting your hand down the inside of your clothing underneath all the layers to get to that button however what i found was because this was underneath i could leave that out and it was actually up the inside of my bib and brace so it was just there so whenever i needed it i could just simply reach it there now i don't know if that's um designed like that on purpose but that was a real nice feature that I, that I spotted you know because i could just quickly and easily just get to it and switch it on as and when i needed it now the brilliant thing with these that i really like is the nice small compact battery as you can see there it's a really nice compact battery and the position of it is much better than i thought it was going to be there that is actually stored in the pocket in the side pocket just there that's the lead that connects to it and that's the side pocket that goes in the side just like a normal trouser pocket however i thought with that being in your pocket it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable when you sat certainly when you sat fishing with your hands on your knees or on, or on your lap but the pocket is positioned not in front of you like a like a pocket on some like on jeans and that sort of thing and it's certainly not right on the side either it's slightly just behind and the I just forgot it was even there so that is a new a fantastic position again i don't know if that's a design feature but that was something that really surprised me i thought it was going to get in the way but it didn't and the other good thing about these was that uh, there isn't a, an independent button on this battery now there are some batteries out there that kind of go into a it's it, it's like a standby mode they it lies dormant so when you put these on in the morning you connect the battery put it obviously um, underneath everything else and then you you go off to your day's fishing in order to switch these on all i had to do was press that button so there was no standby button on that little battery whereas on the other battery which is with the gillet which i'll tell you about in a moment it's actually got a button on there i don't know the name for it but it's a button that you need to press to kind of switch the battery on before you start heating the jacket and that can be a little bit awkward if this is really underneath lots of lots of different layers okay so that's something that i spotted with that garment but as regards to the trousers the leggings they've been absolutely bang on so far the buttons worked every single time but they have been worth the money so far and i've been using them on mainly on the on the hottest level but that's when it uses most of the battery life and i i mean the longest stint i've actually worn them with them actually switched on is three hours up to now and that is on full power now i don't know how much longer than that it will last but obviously i'll be finding that out so i'm going to continue wearing these over the next few weeks and i'll be reporting back to you but so far so good now the actual vest itself again the buttons worked every time it's fantastic but this one works slightly different and i didn't know this at the start basically this comes with you can see the delay there it's got side pockets with zips one at either side but the actual zip for uh, the pocket for the battery is actually on the inside of the jacket now this is actually advertised as uh, water resistant so i haven't tried it in the rain yet because it's been underneath everything else you see so that's why um, i haven't tested that out yet and the button for this it's not on a tag or anything it's just on the inside um, of the right hand side of the uh, of the vest okay now the battery is a different battery now that tucks away on the inside and it's a zipped away there but as you can see it's a different battery it's larger if i just disconnect it it's much larger than the other one if i put them side by side for you you can see the difference in size okay so this one um the battery in the vest is much much bigger obviously it's a little bit heavier as well as you'd expect but this battery has got one feature on it which i didn't know about if i hold that there for you it's got a button see the button there that button is basically what you need to press before you want to start heating the jacket so if i switch it on you see all four lights have just come on and that's telling me that the battery is charged full all right if it wasn't charged full it would be on three two or one okay and basically what you need to do with this is you need to press that button and then press the button to heat the jacket i didn't know that i'll be absolutely honest with you i didn't read the instructions i don't even know if it's in the instructions um i was just trying to use it like the other battery on the leggings and i thought it wouldn't work i thought it was broken but it was only after playing around with it for a bit that i realized that so if you're going to wear this underneath two or three or four other layers then it could be a little bit difficult to get to that battery to press that button to switch the jacket on so if you are 
gonna think about getting a jacket like this the functionality of it is fantastic the buttons worked every time it gets really warm the length or the life of the battery has been the same so far that I've used it as the as the leggings but you might want to think about the order of your clothing that you actually wear it because if you like say if you're gonna put two or three layers on the top of this then it might be difficult to get to that button in order for you to start using it hope that makes sense it's not cheap clothing that's probably why it's regarded as probably you know the the best that there is out there but quite generally i think you'll agree that you usually get what you pay for and like i say after four weeks of testing these both garments have been working fantastic no problems whatsoever but i will continue to use them and if anybody wants to learn more about these products i'll put a link underneath this video to their website well, I hope you found this video useful in some shape or form. If you've got any more specific winter questions, then please comment below in the comment section. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more videos from this channel. There will be videos next week on Monday and Thursday, so don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you do want to check out my more in-depth fishing channel, that's Patreon TV. The link is just there, and there's a link underneath this video for you. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you on Monday.